welcome to another average angler video today on live match fishing again at acorn it's been at least six eight weeks since i've been here fishing in an open competition in fact it's been any fishing of any description um, it's tuesday affordable open i've drawn peg 27 which as you can see is on the point of the island kind of miles away from everybody else and you can tell by the fact that there's lots of pegs to my left that this isn't always a good area and it has pretty recently produced a good match weight but i believe that was catching short down the edge in shallow water which may or may not happen today with the weather changing so much it's quite a good turnout quite a lot of regulars up here now that know how to fish this place it's harder and harder and harder to get in the frame and i'm almost ready i feel like i could have made maybe set up a couple more rigs i'm just going to go with it and, and set them up as i go six hours and i feel like 70 pound 100 pounds going to frame so it's not hectic fishing so if you need to spend 10 minutes setting another rig up at the end of the world i'm going to start with a bit of dobbing i've got lines set up for um silverfish i've got lines set up for carp shore and silverfish and potentially carp longer as well so i'm just going to go through it and i'll talk you through it as we go next time you see me we'll be fishing right then guys one hour update it started raining, which wasn't the forecast, it's only spitting in a very light rain at the moment, it's not a problem. So I started over dubbing, went over to the far bank, dubbed a bit, but didn't really get any success. A couple of guys to my right have hooked fish dubbing. Some of them have been landed, some of them have been lost. So the fish are still moving around and giving up foul looks. Sorry about the tapping, that's me just tucking some nuggets in. Um, yeah, so the fish are moving around, but they're not really feeding the big fish. People are sort of hooking them by dobbing or foul locking them. <clears throat> so I had, right at the start, I fed a ball of ground bait into the open water to my left, because I've got three empty pegs to my left down here, because it's not a favoured end of the lake in the winter, in the cooler months. So give me a bit of room to my left here. Um, so I'll put a ball, a small ball of sort of silverfish ground bait down there with a few maggots in. And I've had a couple of roach over it and it just looked just looked another little roach now. So I've had like maybe four or five roach and a little pasty of a carp, literally less than a pound. One of the stock is from the main lake. If you saw the main lake video where I fished on the main lake catching the small stockies, you'll know the sort of size. At the moment, it seems one red maggot, one white maggot is the best hook bait. If I put a single maggot on, I get a quicker bite, but the roach are much smaller. You saw that was a half decent stamp of roach there. I'm not going to win anything with these roach. But I'm just dropping in just a few maggots every now and again through the through the little sprinkle pot over the top of the ball of ground bait. I'm tempted to put some more ground bait in, but I'm not sure if they'll come. Sometime, what I found here is they're quite fussy when it comes to ground bait. Um, and if you put too much in, it can ruin it. Can ruin it. Just feeding me short line there, just using my top. My pole as a marker, because I've got no reflections in the water or anything, it's faded because of just the distance. With it being windy, so I just want to make sure the maggots are going down the same hole. Um, so yeah, I've got a line to the left there, just saw me feed that. And that'll be for later on. So all I'm doing on this uh, line down, down down to the left is just tapping a few maggots in over the top of the ground bait gloves. And then just lowering the just letting me slow falling maggot rig going in. Um, the same rig, I've got a line fishing oh I've got a line plumbed up fishing over towards the island, about a foot, two foot short of the island. And the same rig, the same depth. So when I started catching on this, I took a decision. I could have just put some more of the same bait on, but I thought, oh, let's just see what happens. So I've put some micro there. Um, I've just put a few micros there to see if I can draw some better fish. I've gone over it a couple of times in between catching these roach. But um, at this moment, I'm not catching. I've not had a bite over it. I've tried expander and I've tried maggot and double maggot. Um, so um, well, I lost my train of thought now. So um, 
Yeah, I tried to get an expander over it, and I've not really had much success, so I'm just resting it for a bit. There's fish there because they're bubbling. Just reducing the amount of maggots that I'm putting through this pot. Now that there's a few fish there, just try to starve a few onto the hook. Um, I'm not feeding that short line air every single time I go out, just, you know, five or six minutes, giving it a couple of good pinches. It may come to nothing, but it's, it's kind of a throwaway line. Sometimes here yeah, you can catch F1 short. You don't catch many of them, but they are. You might catch two or three or four if you're lucky, but they're um, good sized ones. When the, when the weights are going to be as low as they are today, everything counts, doesn't it? So I'm in a good position to see what's going on on the lake, really, from, from the point of view of who's catching and who isn't. Um, so that's nice. I haven't seen anybody bagging up. I think Gary two pegs to my right had two carp. And I've seen a few people have one carp maybe. There's a few people I can't see that might be doing alright. A few of the sort of regular framers are just out of sight at the moment. But all of a sudden this fruit floats just started going under with some regularity literally two minutes before I put the thought about putting the camera on and I just start to get a few bites. I'm just gonna keep these maggots ripping in and Just keep fish coming because maybe a few roach come, might, you know, if I keep ticking these roach over, I might pick up the odd bream, the odd tench, um, and the odd carp might come in. And then I can look at uh, topping that weight up in the last hour when the fish start to feed because that's, that's what today's going to be all about. Today's going to be all about the last hour. And this bite there's a few fish about now. So there's the one hour update. I'm, you know, I've got what, seven or eight fish in the net, but they're all roach and a tiny, tiny, tiny carp. Um, which is, you know, barely any bigger than the, car the, the roach that I've caught. But, getting bites. The weather's not too bad. I'm going to keep cracking on and I'll give you an update later. Right guys, just, put the, just uh, turned you off five minutes ago and I'll just... just that little run of roach that I caught came to an end. I thought I'll have a little look with me double maggot over the top of me. Remember I said to you I could a line further over. Same the same rig which I'm about to fed it with micros. A few maggots and then just talked to what I think might be either a small carp or an F1. So that would be nice. It's an F1. I think there's a few F1s over there, but they're being very shy about biting. Loads of these, but they're an alright stamp. Take him, he goes in with the carpies. Just get me, well, not get me, get me click out just yet, but. So there we are, so that's the best fish I've had all day. Probably an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes, and just have to stop rambling onto you guys. So I'm using a little 20 Kaizen hook today. You can see that on the camera. Two live maggots, not messing about with deads or anything. It's going to feed me the. Uh, I don't know, short the hands are a bit wet, so this might not be brilliant. Got away with it. And then. Uh, Back out over there, I'm not going to feed anything this time, just going to see what bites we get. Right guys, two and a half hours in. Still only really catching on the one line where the ground bait went in. Top to the ground bait didn't seem to make any difference. Now I'm starting to feed it a bit heavier with maggots to see if that'll make a difference. I don't think it will. Um, Single maggot gets for quicker bites, but they're just small fish, but I can't get a bite and double the maggot at the minute. So I'm just going to stick with single maggots, give me an indication of, give me a bit of confidence to feed heavier, because single maggot, getting lots of bites here is definitely 
there a few roaches about. I'm thinking about whether I should start up another line and try something, but looking around, absolutely nobody else is catching anything. You know, all I've really caught since I spoke to you is a couple of a couple more roach, a skimmer, another couple of pasty carp, you know, nothing to talk to speak of really. Getting bites and keeping me busy, but I've not put any weight in the net. I've heard that peg 11 is catching quite well. Um, I've, swapped between, I've been swapping between my two lines. And I'm just trying to pick up odd fish off each, but all I can seem to get at the moment is roach. I'll try and see if I can catch some roach shorter on where I've been chucking bait out of my hand. Maybe I can put a little. Just have a look over there, maggots down to me, let down close in. Which I might have a look in a minute, so I've been putting bait down there now for two and a half hours. Just to see if there's any silvers down there. I might expect the carp to have moved in on it yet, but. The bite and a fish is worth something today at the moment. I think I have been told by my mate, he's rang me up, he's, he's on the other end of the lake. He said that pegs 11 and 13 are catching. Is the dead opposite end of the lake to me. Can't really see what how they're doing. I think Peg 11 is doing better. It's all irrelevant, really. I'm just trying to catch what I can. Did think I might go down the Silvers route once I started catching a few, but it just hasn't materialised or turned into any kind of level of. I'm not really catching a lot, if you know what I mean. This little indication there, then, this little lift. Probably should have struck it. Um, yeah, not a lot to report. It's that time of year, and this is what the videos are going to be like now. It's kind of you nick a few fish here, you nick a few fish there, and just try and build swims to the, towards the end of the match. And see if you can get good finishes with runs of silvers or carp. Let you fish around where I've fed because I can see you know, bubbles and dimples and indications. I'll put another ball of ground bait in now and just um, see if I can draw some more fish in. See if I can pin some fish on the deck because it's just not happening at the moment. So I'll leave me to do that and I'll update you later. So that's two, just to recap, it's two and a half hours in. More of the same really. I've got no idea what weight I've got, it's not a lot. Four or five pound of bits and bobs. Oh, I've just gone down there right on now, Jim. I some micros and go over to the next spander. And I've got this little pipe sticking out and got to my right. And I've just gone. Um, just gone over the top of it. And uh, like this nice big lump. That's quite really easy. Show my fingers on the hook and then he just flipped and the line caught around my fingers. So, yep, this is probably it. Okay. See so if he's still got the hook in his mouth or he spat it out. He's got rid of it. Well, it needs to calm down a minute so I can weigh him. He's eight. Everyone, it's half past two. I've got a few ideas in my head of what I need to do. There seems to be some fish down to this right hand margin. But I'm trying to work out how to catch them is interesting, so I'm going to have to go down there and do some re plumbing because where I wanted to fish, I can't get the rig to the bottom anymore. First of all, I thought I'd check this left hand short line where I've been feeding the maggots all day because I've just pot a big potted it and left it. Last time I was on it. I'm just picking that up on the camera and I was fishing down here, straight under, probably a roach. 
But um, yeah, big potted it. Just to see if I can get something going on going down there. Big potted it with uh, bag it. Just wondering if you know, the car put plumbing or something, but that wasn't a car. Pumped a little bit, it's probably bent over the maggot over the up point, but we'll see in a second. Uh, gone over and I've had a fish and I've looked a fish at five pounds, got it into the net and lost it. And I've gone over there and there's fish over there as well, small, I think they're small fish. So I am thinking about chopping my uh, dobbing rig up, which is nice and light. And going over there and putting some maggots in the shallow water tight over and see if I can catch a few of the smaller carp. Just get a run of them together as well. I've got a few ideas, but I'm just, I've kind of abandoned my open water swim to the left and my uh, swim just short in the deep water because it feels like deep water fish while I'm catching this. Um, these silvers, even on this short, very short route line here, that I'm just I'm pretty sure that was a silver that I just bumped then. trying to put them in a fish together. I feel like I'm in a four or five fish would really put me in it. Gary's got another one now. So Gary's picked a hot fish through the day. So Gary's probably winning down our end there. He always perseveres with the carp and manages to make it through in the end. I just need some, I need to put a run or something together to try and make something happen because at the moment it's just petering out into a a bit of a mess. This is not a this is not a way to do it. So we've got something like this could be a tent, could be a cart. It's not massive, but there it is. It could be a tench. That's more than a little carcass. I can catch them short, that'll be nice. Maybe that's what I bumped a minute ago. I get another one of them. I'll continue to think about how I'm going to finish this like this matter off. Got options available. I feel like my right hand margin could be about to produce something good. I'm not just going to dab on it in a minute and just see. Just see if um, dabbing on it will get me the results I want. If there's fish there, I'm not sure they're settling, but if there's fish sort of hanging over the bait and coming in and out, there may be a bit of bread dabbing in. I'm just nick them as they come in. There's not loads of fish there, so maybe that'll work. And then, like I said, I've got the line over, but if I can catch those carp like that short here, maybe that's an option as well. But they're not really going to be, they're not massive weight builders compared to a lot of five or six pounders that Gary's catching. I need to catch them quite fast. Just feels like we're getting towards the crux of the day now and we need to make the right decisions now based on what we've learned at the moment. That's been proven to be tougher than you might imagine. Decided. Well, hello. Decided that I needed to have a proper go down this right hand side, so I've re-plumbed it. I couldn't quite get as tight as I wanted to originally. Another expander, and then I've got a tiny little kin, tiny little fruit shoot lids. Um, I have some soaked micros and just dotted it over the top on the slope there. And that one first go. So that's nice. 
Let's come in. I seem to want to be in the shallow water today. So we'll take that. So we've got little one mil pellets. Just tapping them in so that they uh, don't fall out during the shipping. I'm going to sit sideways on my box because I can't quite reach with that. I don't want to follow a section. I have a big section behind me. So probably I can't see anything. I'm not sure what sort of footage you're going to get of this because I'm certainly not really picking it up on the tripod cam. And I'm feeding this. Because besides I've got a little sticky out weed that I sort of know that I'm on the bottom just at a certain point and then I'll just drag in the float back until the until I know that I've got a, I'm not that my rig is slightly just up down the slope a little bit. Everything's dead tight so the fish can just swim straight up. They ain't got to upend themselves, which they don't like doing in the winter. You can just, um, these little one mil micros will spread out and some of them will sit on the slope and the cart can come along and just suck those little one mil micros in. And then when they see those big fat juicy expander there, they can't resist it. That's the plan anyway. Get your cameras rolling for a few minutes and just see if we can catch something. Active action's very slow. I'm not expecting to bag up, but you know, four or five fish from down here might be a nice little result. Still got me left hand maggot short swim to think about and I've also got a right hand same same rig to my right which I normally there's something there now hang on, normally I don't feed until um, I need to in that six mil line so it's two fish two fish hooked in two pups now you guys have seen all of that so that's nice it was a nice timing to put the camera on a little update They're not massive fish, but they're much, much bigger than anything else I've been catching all day. I'm going to try and go and catch some mitts without putting any feed in just to see if it's possible. He's only a little two pound up. Right, I'm going to crack on, guys, and I'll um, catch you up later. Right, guys, I turned you off short. I turned you off maybe. 10 or 15 minutes ago, maybe 20 minutes ago at the most, and this, I'd had two in a row, this is the fourth one I've hooked from down there now, so this, the third one took a bit of a while to come, but then this one's just, just come quickly afterwards, so it's a case of being patient. This one's an absolute whale. Thought he might be a big fish because he was just wallowing. Wait, geez, he is a big fish. Could be a double. snapped again than we did last time. Might be a discord for this one. He's only just hooked. I can't quite get my fingers on it. I've got quite big chunky fingers. I'm going to give him a quick way with the scales. Yeah, he's over ten. He's a ten. So all of a sudden I've gone from sort of I mean 30, 20 something, 20, 30 something. I haven't I haven't got a clicker set up today. I've, um, I could have just used one of my right way uh, things. I didn't think. 
to put one on that on the net there. But um, so I've got no idea really. But what, sixty pounds the net limit, so I'm nowhere near the net limit yet. So that's nice. Just going to put some bait in one of these short lines, just so I don't forget. Because this, whilst things are going well at the moment, this can very quickly finish, and I've got nowhere to go. short line. Two or three minutes before I caught the, fourth, the third fish, I was thinking, should I rest it, should I rest it, and then I had a bite, and I thought, oh, I can't rest it now. So now I had a little indication just before I had that fish, and I was going to pull the rig out and reset the track, and I thought, well, maybe, maybe he's still there, you know, it'd be a good sort of wintry slow feeding mode. Maybe it's worth just leaving it in for a minute or two, because it didn't get any fish spooking any signs of any fish spooking I don't know how long we've got left I'm assuming we've got an hour at the most maybe a little bit left less than an hour an hour check in a minute in the last half an hour I've had four fish from down this edge four probably 20 pound so that's massive because like literally about 10 pound for the whole of the rest of the match See how much time I've got left, see how much I can afford to be patient. I've got 45 minutes left, <laughs> less than that, 40 minutes. I'm just going to give it a rest and have a little look on these short lines. I'm going to absolutely muller it. I'm probably just going to catch a roach on this left hand swim, that's what's been happening when I've gone on it, but you just never know. I don't think the carp have really not been in this deeper water at all. So you normally get a roach bite immediately and then sometimes we'll get a second go and catch something better. There's proper fish down there, maybe we'll get them straight off the bat. I don't know if you can see what's going on there. I don't know if, I don't know if the chest cam's picking that up, it's wide enough. So just to tuck it in a short number four to me left. I've been loose feeding maggot there all day by hand. In the last sort of hour or so, I've been I've been tying it up with just a cup, just been potting down that hole, just trying to get fish used to being there where there's some bait. That is a blind fish off the bottom, very very shallow, but plenty, and that's why why I don't think the carp are down there because they just do that, just doing that, just coming in shallow. I mean, he's not come to feed or anything, not fed this line or anything. So he's not come to feed. He's not there for any reason. 
Smart. He's not there for any reason of that. And he just wanted to swim through the rig. It's just pure coincidence that he's bumped into the rig. He may have even marked at some shots or something, you just don't know, do you? Silver's bag. There's another pound in the silver's bag. Not that we're in, not know we'll be in the running for the silvers because um, a few of the regulars that fish here, they literally exclusively fish for the silvers. So, they will have just sat and fished for more match. I feel like they've fed a bit today, to be honest. Where I've put bait in for them, I've, I've caught a few. So you can get another one of them, I don't mind catching a few of them. I'll take a few of them any day of the week. Quickly, if you have them quickly like that. Oh, what's this one? This one? Something else. Some little carp, I think, this one. Carps. Oh, 